All right, so continuing 4.2, uh, we're going to talk about what constitutes a function. And so a function is a relationship. that uh, pairs one input value or each input value no. pairs each input value with exactly, and that's important, exactly one output value. So uh, if we think of input as x and output as y, uh, for each x value there is only one y value. Now that does not go vice versa. Um, there, the output values can show up uh, with multiple input values, but again, for each input, there is only one output. Uh, and then when we talk about a linear function, a linear function is a function whose graph is a non-vertical non-vertical line or part of a non-vertical line. So we had that with our last one. I could draw a line through those. Uh, it was a constant. Um, we had a constant change rate of change, which makes it linear. Um, and we're going to see at least one more example where we have to talk. Where we're going to talk about whether it's linear or nonlinear. So. Function for each input, there's exactly one output, otherwise it's not a function. Um, one way to remember that is the input values cannot cheat on the output values. Uh, and a function whose graph is a non-vertical line, or part of a non-vertical line, is our linear function. So, moving on to example two, representing a linear function. The table shows the relationship between the number of photos x you take and the amount of memory y in megabytes left uh, on your camera's memory chip. Is the relationship a linear function? Describe the relationship using words, an equation, and a graph. So I know this is a function because 0, for my one input, I have only one output. I don't have another 0 or 2 y values listed here. Same for the 1. There's only this 1 in this x value, and there's no two y values that go with that 1. So that's how I know that it is a function. So then to decide if it's a linear function, then I need to graph. And so um, I'm going to, we're going to make a break in our graph because I am not graphing all the way to 500 from 0. So we're going to say that there's a break in our graph and we're going to start at 501. So this is 502, 503, 504, 505, 506, 77, 8, 509, 10, 11, 12, 5, 12. And you can label all of them. This just gives me a better idea so it makes it easier to graph. So I'm going to go ahead 
in order to know if this is a linear function, I've got to graph it to see if it forms a line. And then we're going to describe the relationship using words. Uh, and an equation. But we're going to actually start with this graph part. So, if I take zero photos, then I am up here at uh, 512 megabits megabytes on my computer. Uh, if I take one photo, then I'm at 509. Uh, if I take two photos, then you guessed it, 506. That's not too far. And then if I take three photos, we're at 503. And so I'm looking at this, this very much looks like a line, so I'm going to say it's a linear function. If you want to find another way with, to be absolutely sure, if I take the 512 minus 509, And we get 3. And then 509 minus 506 gives us 3. And 506 minus 503 gives us 3. So that's constant. And because that difference between those is constant, then I know that this is a, yes, indeed, it's a linear function. So yes, it's a linear function. So I've already graphed it, so we want to describe the relationship using words. So I'm just going to look at this table. As my number of pictures, or as the number of pictures, increase, the amount of memory decreases by three times number of photos or three megabytes for each photo. That would be another way of writing that. Um, because that's what's happening. We end up, each photo takes three megabytes. So each time we take a photo, three megabytes comes off our memory. Or, you know, usable memory. So there's my description in Word. So now if I want to write that equation, uh, we need to, I can use what I wrote right here. Um, that our memory, which is Y, is equal to the number of pictures, so three times, so three megabytes per picture, right? Um, plus 512, and I'm missing something because I want to decrease, I was missing the decrease. So this would be minus a negative 3x, because we decrease by 3 times. Or the other way you could write it is y equals, we start at 512 megabytes, and we decrease by 3 per picture. And both of those are the same. And so then there's my equation. So, again, based on, and the easier way to look at that is from 512 to 509, we subtract 3. And so our constant rate of change is that negative 3. So it goes with our variable. And that is how we graph a linear function, write about a linear function, and just describing what it says. So that is it.